Thank you, Don. It's nice to have you back. So, yes. It's always inter Last week she was gone, and it's always interesting where we're trying to have the computer play the music for us because the piano is right there, and I can hear the piano, but when it's the computer, the sound comes out of the speakers and it shoots down this way, and I can't hear it as good. So the last song, I couldn't hear what was going on, and we had to start over because I couldn't follow the melody to lead. So, yay, computers, fun times. A couple of announcements this morning. Uh, we are having VBS this summer, so if you are interested in signing your kids or grandkids up for that, there's sign-up forms on our website, EmmanuelElkPoint.com. Um, if you are interested in helping with that, please let me know. Uh, we'd love to have helpers for that. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll be July 27th through 30th, the Tuesday through Friday, 9 to noon. That is the last uh, full week in July. So or the last week in July. So come to that, it should be a lot of fun. So our theme is Rocky Railway, I think. So it's like railroads and stuff, so. Uh, June 25th, so a couple weeks from now, Friday, June 25th, is Midsummer at Dalesburg Lutheran Church. Uh, if you don't know where Dalesburg is, it's pretty much straight north of Vermilion on University Road. So join them for that. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, events start at 3 p.m. There's an evening concert by Dakota Road this year. If you want to know more about what's going on, there is an, a couple of flyers out in the entryway about that. So it's summer, which means that those are our only announcements. So if, are there other announcements that people have or would like to share? So. I hope you guys are staying cool this week. Um, nothing like really cold last week and then really hot this week. So with that, let us prepare and pause to begin our worship service. Let us rise as we begin our service with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our opening hymn is Making Their Way. This is a new hymn. Uh, the tune may be familiar to some of you. It's a tune that's also a couple hymns in the other uh, hymnal, but we will listen to it and play it through. So, uh, yeah, let's play it through once just so we get the tune and then we'll sing through. So. Jesus' disciples, one and all, 
gathered for worship, offering thanks, the greatest with the least, have come to share this feast, making their way all the world over, Christians assemble on this day, hearing the word, sharing the banquet, learning to walk in Jesus' way. Members of Christ united in love, they seek our God to know, and so together grow, making our way season by season, pilgrims we journey till life's end, traveling light, sharing the riches, caring for stranger as for friend, till in the joy of longing fulfilled, together we will come to our eternal home. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With you. Let us pray together. All-powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Excuse me. It's a wonderful allergy season. It's really great. So, our first reading this morning is from the third chapter of Genesis. Immediately after Adam and Eve eat the forbidden fruit, they hide from God. Neither takes responsibility for their sin, instead, blaming each other, the snake, and even God. The curse on the snake was understood as a messianic prophecy by the early church who associated Eve's offspring with Christ. A reading from Genesis. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals, among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Then I'll put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. Are you going to work? There it goes. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning. More than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, with the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Let us rise as we welcome the gospel reading. (laughs) 
Our gospel reading comes from the third chapter of Mark. In response to charges that he is possessed, Jesus wonders aloud how anyone who is demon-possessed can cast out demons. Those who do the will of God are possessed by the Holy Spirit, siblings of Christ. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went home. And the crowd came together again, so that Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. Then his family heard it. They went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of demons he casts out demons. He called them to him and spoke to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. He replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So when I was in college uh, is when the brand Under Armour got big. Um, It was around since, like, I I looked it up, like, 96, 97 is when it officially started. But it wasn't until about 2003 is when it got, like, big enough that they actually bought a commercial. And I remember seeing the commercial for the first time, probably during some football game or something. And the commercial was called Protect This House. And it is this view of a whole bunch of big guys lifting big weights and grunting and pumping each other up and yelling at each other. And then one of the guys who's the main person in the commercial stands up and goes, it's us versus them. We must protect this house. How many of you guys remember that commercial? Yeah, it is a great commercial in the sense that Under Armour is now one of the biggest brands in sports clothing. And it's a great commercial because it highlights and works in us a big part of how our culture works. That it's our side versus their side. That we're the good guys against them bad guys over there. I mean, we see it in sports, which is where Under Armour really got its start of I want my sports team to win, and I want the other sports team to lose. And if my sports team wears Under Armour, maybe that will help them win. So therefore, it's great. But we see this everywhere else, too. Uh, We see it in politics. Um, I want my candidate to win, and the other side's candidate to lose. Uh, We see it in business. Business A wants to win and wants business B to lose. It's even in churches and denominations. My church is better than your church. My denomination is better than your denomination. That pretty much everything in life is about this competition to be the winner. 
And what that leads to is things like cliques, teams, sides, natural groupings of common individuals, one group against the other groups. Uh, it's a family type thing. In fact, that's the word that's often used in a lot of these situations. And so you root for your family against other families. He first talks about this, Jesus does, in our gospel today, when he starts talking about a house divided will fall. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. So the interpretation you can take from this is to double down on your house. We must protect this house. That we have to be strong as a house so we don't become divided and so we are not overcome by other houses. And so this lifts up this idea that it's my side against the other side. And that's how Jesus' family seems to react to his preaching that they've been hearing about. So this crowd has gathered, and there's so many people together that Jesus and his disciples can't even eat. They're so crowded and busy with work. If Jesus' family hears about this, Oh, that son of mine, that brother of mine, he's getting too big for his britches. He's going to embarrass us. People think he's gone crazy. We got to stop him. We must protect this house. And so they go to confront Jesus and bring him back home so he doesn't embarrass them further. And people outside the house tell Jesus, hey, your mother and brothers and sisters are outside looking for you. And Jesus replies, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. So the standard response to Jesus' family would be to respond to their need to protect the house, to say, I have to protect this house. I have to consider my family so that I don't divide the house so that it does not fall. But that's not what Jesus does, is it? He doesn't listen to his family blindly. He doesn't seem to protect that house. Instead, what he does is he expands his family. He widens the house. Now, it's important to note that he's not excluding his actual mother and brother and sisters, which frankly is really interesting to think about. How many of you guys were aware that there's texts that talk about the fact that Jesus has brothers and sisters? And it, do we ever think about the fact that Mary and Joseph had more kids later? No, we never really think about it, but yeah, here they are, that Jesus has like stepbrothers and stepsisters. But he just expands. So Jesus isn't excluding them. If we look at the very first chapter of Acts, the disciples are all gathered in the upper room for the Holy Spirit to come at Pentecost. And it says that he's gathered there with the 11 disciples. Judas has already left and died. And there's some women who are there. But then it says in the upper room are also Jesus' mother and brothers. So it says, then the, ten, the 11 disciples and those with them Return to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. So at the beginnings of what we consider the actual early church, Jesus' mother and brothers are there. So he's not 
kicking them out. He's not limiting who he considers family, who he considers his house. He's expanding it. So what does this teach us? It tells us that so often we get caught up with thinking that the way we need to keep the house from being divided is to kick out or control the ones who are being different. And we fail to realize that the way that Jesus keeps the house from being divided is to change what it means to be a house. That we want to define who house is by excluding those different, those who are in my bloodline, those who root for my team, those who think these things or understand only this stuff. And if you're not in those definitions, you're out. That may keep that smaller house from then being divided. But all it does is make lots of little smaller houses. And that divides the larger house. Because we're more than the small groups we make. We're more than my family or your family. We're more than this state or that state. We're more than Democrat or Republican or liberal or conservative, more than even Viking fan and Packer fan. Because Jesus doesn't care about any of that. He cares. Do you do the will of God? If you do, you are his brother and sister. Anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. So what does Jesus call us to do? Micah 6.8 He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. From Luke 10, 27, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And from John 15, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. We don't love by excluding. We love by building up the house. We love by telling others that in God's mighty fortress, all are welcome. Where in the world you are defined and divided and set into categories and group, in God, in God you are welcomed and loved and the only thing that matters is that Christ died for you and rose for you. And in that, you are a child of God adopted into the loving family of God, the body of Christ. And as it says in Romans 8, nothing can take that love from you. No division can take God's love for you. No divided house can take that love from you. Because Christ has overcome all of those divisions through love. That's how Christ protects his house. Amen. Our hymn of the day is All Are Welcome. Let us rise as we sing. Let us build the house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. 
Let us build the house where prophets speak and words are strong and true, where all God's children dare to seek to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness and a symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build the house where love is found in water, wine, and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Here the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ the peace that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build the house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and teach, and live the word they've known. Hear the outcast and the stranger bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome. All are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build the house where all are named, their songs and visions heard, and loved and treasured, taught and claimed as words within the word. Built of tears and cries and laughter, Prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our prayers. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe. Unify us in the service of the gospel, that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us, and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, Seek in restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear, that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Strengthen and renew us by your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal, 
that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, we call upon you to bring peace to our world, to end hatred and violence, to end hatred and anger that lead to violence. Be with and keep safe all in harm's way. We pray especially for all those serving in our military. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of blessing, we lift up the blessings of this community. Today, we lift up Arla, Sadie, Jaden, Dick, George, Carol, Mason, and Heather, who have birthdays this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, you bring comfort to us in our need. Be with all who fear and are anxious about coronavirus. Be with all hospital staff who work to fight it. Be with vaccination staff across the country administering vaccines. Be with those in our community working to continue to feed and care for us at restaurants, grocery stores, and general stores, clinics, and first responders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with all diagnosed with coronavirus. Be with those who have lost loved ones and help us to protect one another in our actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we call out to you with the prayers of our hearts. Be with Kendall, Linda, Dawn, Janet, Cruz, Janice, Kevin, Winnemary, Dale, Elsa, Larry, and Pastor Doris. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those on our long-term prayer list. Merle, Sharon, Doris, Owen, Chuck, George, Carol, Berlin, Matt, Mel, Cole, Mary, Lincoln, Lori, Judy, Dennis, and Kurt. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I ask you please share that peace with one another at this time. If you're watching online, I invite you to type it to each other in our chat. So peace be with you. For our offering time, there is an offering plant out in our entryway. There's one by the church office. You can always mail in a check to uh, the church or sign up for Give Plus our online giving a link that is found on our church website so if kids want to bring their fishbowl stuff forward we can so let us pray that was too fast for you guys i'm sorry thank you Let us pray our offering prayer together. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup 
gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. For our communion this morning, we'll be communing by com uh, continuous distribution, but we'll do one side at a time. So we'll do this side first, and then we'll move over and do this side. So come for all is ready.
trying to figure out how to coordinate how we move the camera so that it's not <laughs> butt shots. <laughs> like I, think it was less. I think that looks good. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Also, I want to. I coordinated with Spencer with the Under Armour shirt. Totally did. No. And I saw he was wearing that. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, let us rise for our for our blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we receive from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is A Mighty Fortress. <laughs> Almighty fortress is our God, a sword and shield victorious. He brings the cruel oppressors drawn and wins salvation glorious. The old satanic foe has sworn to work us woe with craft and dreadful might. He arms himself to fight, on earth he has no equal. No strength of ours can match his mind, we would be lost, rejected. But now a champion comes to fight, whom God himself elected. You ask who this may be, the Lord of hosts is he, Christ Jesus, mighty Lord, God's only Son adored. He holds the field victorious. The hordes of devils fill the land, all threatening to devour us. We tremble not, unmoved we stand, they cannot overpower us. Let this world's tyrant rage, in battle will engage. Its might is doomed to fail, God's judgment must prevail. One little word of God's word forever shall abide, no thanks to foes who fear it. For God himself fights by our side with weapons of the Spirit. Were they to take our house, good honor, child, or spouse, through life be wenched away. They cannot wait me. The kingdom's ours forever. Excuse me. Uh, just a note on the background image I picked. This is a picture of Warburg Castle in Germany, which is the place that Luther was hiding out for a time because the Catholics uh, wanted to kill him. And he was hiding there, and one of the things he did was translate the Bible into German, but he also wrote uh, Mighty Fortress while he was there. So there's a good chance the Mighty Fortress he was talking about or thinking about in his head was this picture of this castle here. So, but Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.
sorrow that came to us. Uh, so, 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 uh, so